everyone, welcome back. Uh, this episode we're going to continue flip-flopping between personal and organizational tools for alignment. Uh, and today what I want to talk about was strategic portfolio alignment. So we've spent some time understanding what it is to line ourselves up from the inside out so that we can start to show up as responsive, engaged leaders. And we've talked about this idea of going out and understanding what's important to our customers and aligning from the outside in when it comes to our organizations. Today I wanted to share with you my method for aligning your portfolios of work. So you all know I come from a project management background. Uh, so that project portfolio, that, that capital investment management type place uh, is kind of where I love to be and I love to work. Um, this tool will work equally well for your understanding of the work that's going on in your operations as well, right? So ultimately, it would be great to be able to see the whole lot all in one place because we want to start to move towards a more integrated view of how our capital investments drive change in our operations. So whilst I may fall into language around um, more of that sort of capital project management type orientation, please know that with a little bit of thinking, you can also apply this tool to operations. It just might take a little bit more uh, in terms of working out what that looks like. But if you've got any questions, hit me up with a comment or a question or email me. I'd be more than happy to uh, dive into that in a little bit more detail with you. So strategic portfolio management, what does that look like? Well, as I said, we started with this idea of aligning outside in from a customer's perspective. So that's, that's one way that we can start to build uh, these organizing principles or these these big visions of, of what we're trying to orient our capital portfolio around, what we're trying to orient our change and improvement program around, how we're trying to orient our operations. That customer focus could be one area that, that comes up in, uh, in strategy, let's say. Uh, you'll also likely have some kind of vision and strategy statement that's put out as an organization. You'll almost certainly have business unit strategies uh, as well, whether you're in IT or finance or part of the operations business, the, you've got strategy that comes from all sorts of different areas. And so it can be worth a bit of a brainstorm to think about where are all those different areas that are that, that, that strategy is coming from. And then as we start to line this work up, we'll pick and choose and pull those things through as we need. So step one, go out and do a bit of a, a jot down. Where are all of those different strategies? What are, the, what are all of the different things that are driving my stakeholders in my business in terms of where I need to deliver to? So if you're sitting in an IT organization, you're gonna have an IT strategy that you need to execute on. You'll probably have a bunch of stakeholders in the business uh, in, in various business groups that have their own strategies. It's good to know what all of those pieces are. If you're doing your customer observation work, it's a great way to start to feed in some of these insights as well. So you're looking for, in the first instance, where are all of what are all of those pieces um, that can start to drive the demand on our delivery team, on our organization. So that's kind of step one, is go and understand strategy and all of the different areas that it can come from. So once we've understood strategy, then What's likely going on is that you have a whole bunch of work. Now, I used to teach, go and understand all of that work and, and what's on your plate and try and line it back up to strategy. We used to teach retrospectively kind of fitting. And through that process, what we would learn is that, A, generally there's a huge gap between strategy and the work that you're doing. At some point, if you, if you were to plan out organizational strategy, business unit strategy, work in progress, you'll probably find these huge chasms between and that these things don't link well. So we used to teach retrospectively fitting work to strategy. I don't teach that anymore. And the reason I don't teach that anymore is because you can spend a lot of time trying to fit the work that you're doing against strategy, but likely that work was started before the strategy existed, so how can it align? <laughs> Secondly, once people catch wind of the fact that you are strategically aligning work, 
all of a sudden, magically, a whole bunch of that work fits with a whole bunch of strategy. And so you get that shoehorning effect as we try to make all of the things we're doing today fit with strategy. Because all of the things we're doing today are really important and we don't want to drop any of them. So they must fit to strategy. And so I don't teach that retrospective fit anymore. What I do teach is that do a scan of your work in progress. That, that piece around visibility is critical. Get as much of the work that's going on in your organization today, get as much of that visible as you can. Make that visible in whatever way, shape, form you can. The visibility is super, super critical. And then do a bit of a scan. Some of those things will naturally very closely align to strategy. And so pick and choose those big hitters. It's the 80 20 rule. Pick and choose those big pieces that align with strategy or those pieces that align strongly with strategy. Um, make those visible. And then everything else, stress less. Because what we want to do in our next step is that we want to start to use the strategy, and I would say the customer focus particularly, to drive the change and improvement work. And so if we, if we just work with what we've got in terms of today, then instead of spending all that time retrospectively fitting it into strategy and justifying why it should be there, we can take all of that effort and focus it on generating new work. And so we build forward with imperfect information. We build forward based on what we have. And we allow that work in progress to continue. Maybe stop some things that are really obviously not adding value or adding any benefit to the organization. Sure. But my focus is less on the work that you've got today and more about setting up that portfolio so that it will flow through. You're better off spending your time generating new forward thinking work which is going to be more purposeful more valuable people are going to gravitate towards it more and then allowing that current work in progress to kind of just keep ticking along as it needs to but just not to worry about that so much and to naturally start to shift this focus into more valuable more beneficial work so step one strategies customer input get all of that in play understand what that looks like make it really visible Step two, go and understand all of your work in progress. Go and understand all the different places that work can come from. Grab as much of that as you can. Make that visible. Step three, do a little bit of work around grabbing the pieces that really strongly align with strategy. Make those connections visible. Maybe do that piece around actually these things aren't adding value and we'll drop some of the low-hanging fruit off the list. And then let the other stuff just kind of move. And, and, and do its thing. Don't stress too much about that. You're better off focusing on building forward with uh, imperfect information. And then as you start to get into this process of ongoing management, you know, you're partway through the year, make sure that you continue to focus on what's being finished and to focus on when finished, how that aligns back with strategy. When finished, how is that working in customer land? What does that look like in business land? What have we learned from putting that new piece in that we can then feed back into strategy and close the loop? So that's the basis of the frame. Strategy, work in progress, and the feedback loop around closing off uh, customer value and business benefits, feeding that back into your strategy. You can do all of this in a visual. I'm a huge fan of building giant walls full of post-it notes. Um, and that's great fun. You can also do that with an on online whiteboarding tool. Um, but make, make it visible. Make it visual. Strongly, strongly encourage you to start to get into this idea of visual tools, visual management of information. Don't bury it in an Excel spreadsheet or a report that sits on a version of SharePoint or in somebody's email that gets issued every month. Make a spot where people can go to in real time, any time of the day, and see what it looks like today. See what it looks like now. Start to build those visual tools into what you do and how you work. So this is a living document, and it's, it's going to start to generate where you need to focus. It's going to start to generate this um, 
this visibility of where you are maybe working really strongly towards strategy or to customer improvement and maybe where some of those gaps are as well and that's okay. We want this to be this ongoing kind of living process where we review regularly, we've always got that visibility of the work as we know it today and we've got that clear understanding of strategy, work in progress, feedback loops, we can see those gaps. So if you'd like the uh, templates and the tools that go along with this, hop on over to the mailing list and you're going to get all of the supporting documentation that goes with implementing this visual management tool. That's it from me this episode. Uh, I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having an awesome, awesome day. Uh, if you'd like anything else, uh, questions, comments, hit me up with a DM, hit me up with an email. I'd love to hear from you and I hope you have an awesome week. I'll see you very, very soon.